Good day, class. Welcome to another interesting discussion of another lesson for this unit. We are going to talk about the goals and scope of counseling. In this lesson, we are going to go deeper as to what are the different goals when we conduct counseling sessions and what is the scope of counseling. Who are able to do counseling and who are we supposed to conduct counseling sessions to? In this lesson, atong palauma ng atong discussion, mahitungod sa basic concepts of counseling. After knowing those basic concepts of counseling, let us now try to understand what are the different goals when we conduct different sessions in counseling. This will help us to become more responsible, mature, and open in terms of the idea of counseling and in terms of the idea of building relationships with other people. Alright, let's begin. Now, remember this particular idea. Goal setting is an important aspect of many endeavors in life. That includes counseling. Remember class that in a particular timeline, in a particular period, we need to establish goals, right? In order for us to be able to achieve success, to be able to achieve excellence and competence in the different undertakings that we do. That is also something that is quite challenging if we do not understand the basic concepts of this particular endeavor. In this case of counseling, if wata kahibaw o unsaning counseling, on say pulos, on say gamit aning counseling, then we might be able to, we might not be able to establish and determine the goals that we would like to achieve at the end of the counseling session. Alright, so take note of that. Now, in this lesson, we are going to identify the goals and scope of counseling. So with that in mind, always remember to take notes of necessary discussions, necessary inputs. If you have questions, you may jot it down and you can relate it or raise it during our face-to-face -face or sorry, during our online discussions. We are also going to identify your different goals or aims of counseling and discuss the scope of counseling. Now, here are smart goals. We all have goals in life. However, Turning them into reality is not very easy. Our goals can be vague, difficult, or simply impossible. How can we set goals to make them achievable? One way to set achievable goals is to make them SMART. SMART, which stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Relevant, and Time-Based. If your goals are smart, then they are most likely achievable. You know what, class? These or this particular method, no, the abbreviation SMART, is not only used in counseling, but it is used in the context of goal setting in general. If your goals are just simply too vague or too difficult and impossible to achieve, then ultimately you're just wasting your time. But if you're going to put a, a certain procedure, a, system, a certain system in order to achieve that goal, then you are having smart goals that will lead you to smart actions. Now, in continuation, let's now go and discuss into this essential question in our discussion. How does the type or kind of goal affect the process of counseling? Perhaps this has been lingering on your head for the past three minutes that I have been discussing this. But ultimately, we need to be anchored on this question. Nga no man, or unsaon man daw kuno, no, nga maapektahan sa usaka goal or kind of goal ang proseso sa counseling. Nga sir, you're just going to talk about or talk to a person about a particular topic, a particular dilemma, problem, or whatnot, and let the person generate the solution. That's a good understanding of the basic concepts of counseling. But if we go deeper, we need to establish goals in order for us to be patterned or in order for us to pattern in our counseling session or in our process of counseling. Now, in doing so, let us remember that there are different goals that we need to establish or we need to accomplish. This is something that is quite technical or quite formal objective in the discipline of counseling. Now, what are the goals of counseling? 
Goals are the desired result of a process. Since counseling caters to many types of clients with different concerns, it also has varying goals and objectives. Remember that counseling is from the most simplest of conversations down to the most therapeutic of diagnosed illnesses and conditions. Therefore, we need to set specific goals in order for us to achieve our objectives that vary from one person to another. Hence, we are now going to focus on the study of Gibson and Mitchell in 2003 where they have laid out goals or where they have identified the different goals of counseling and the aims of counseling that was also laid out or that was also identified by MacLeod in 2003. So these are the leading proponents of goal setting in terms of counseling in the 21st century. Now, let's begin with Gibson and Mitchell's goals of counseling. The first goal is developmental goal. Developing human growth such as social life, personal life, psychological, and physical well-being is all part of developmental goal. From the term itself, we need to develop. What are we going to develop human growth? In what specific aspects? Those that are laid out on this particular side or particular slide. Social life, personal life, psychological, and even physical well-being. Examples of this is developing a growth mindset, developing a reading habit, anything that develops human growth. And remember that this particular goal of counseling is for the improvement and for the betterment of a particular person. Another goal is preventive goal. This is avoiding undesirable outcomes, behavior, or habits. Example, managing test anxiety the next time the client will take an exam. We all have this quite, uh, you know, dilemma when we have or when we take exams, when we take tests, whatever tests or exams it may be. Remember, class, that when we have preventive goals in mind in counseling, we can avoid undesirable outcomes, behaviors, or habits. This is the first base of trying to understand what we need to do, right, to put ourselves into the position of being able to prevent something undesirable, whether be it the outcome of your mindset, your behavior as a person, or your habit that you develop. Another is enhancement goal. Enhancement goal simply means enhancing special skills or abilities that ultimately will lead to self-actualization. Example is improving public speaking skills. Remember that we are, when we are able to enhance right, our skills and abilities, then we are able to self-actualize. We are able to identify and get to know ourselves better that will ultimately lead us to improve on different areas of endeavors that we are interested in. Another is remedial goal. From the term itself, remedial goal tends to overcome and treat an undesirable development. Diba? We had developmental goals. We also have preventive goals. If ever during preventive goals we are not able to achieve that objective, we have remedial goal. This is now overcoming that undesirable development that happened to you. Example of this is overcoming alcohol addiction. Another is exploratory goal. This simply means exploring new fields, activities, and skills. Example of this is being involved in adventure sports such as rock climbing, hiking, etc. to avoid gambling addiction. Remember, class, that this could be a goal in counseling that we can recommend to our clients or that we can recommend to even ourselves if we are trying to avoid a particular habit, a particular undesirable development that has happened to us over the course of time. Another, reinforcement goal. This is done when we are adopting or maintaining psychologically helpful actions, thoughts, and feelings. Example, Managing one's anxiety when talking to new people. We need to reinforce our strong points. We need to reinforce what helps us to improve and what helps us to be comfortable in new, new experiences, new environments, and new people, new acquaintances that we meet along the way. 
cognitive goal. This means acquiring foundational skill of learning and other cognitive skills. When we talk about cognitive goal, we need to remember that this is improving sustained attention or focus on an activity for a long period of time. This could be done if you're having trouble with your studies, if you're having trouble to concentrate and focus and accomplish a certain task. You can have cognitive goal as a way for you to be able to acquire the foundational skills, right, of learning other cognitive skills and will help you determine what is helpful, what is beneficial, when is the right time to study, what is the right condition in studying, or what is not helpful to you, what is or what leads to being distracted from studying. Another is physiological goal, learning and developing habits for good health. Example, setting an exercise routine. This is something that comes out of counseling that is part of self-actualization when you are able to develop the habit of maintaining good health, maintaining a healthy exercise routine that is not only forcing you to be healthy, forcing you to work out, but will help you develop hormones, endorphins to make you feel happy, to make you feel relaxed, and to make you feel active. Psychological goal. Psychological goal is controlling emotions, aiming to have a positive self-concept and develop interaction skills. Example, learning to properly express anger without hurting oneself or others. Remember class that when we are going to conduct counseling, this could be with a person that you trust or an expert on the field of concern or area of concern. Or this could be done with your self-reflections. Now, when we are going to have psychological goals, we need to make sure that our, our goal here is to control emotions and to develop positive self-concept and develop interaction skills. This means that starting from ourselves, we are able to control what we feel, what we say, and what we do. Next, let's now talk about the aims of counseling according to MacLeod. Here are the different aims. Kaganiha, we have mentioned about the goals. Unse atong i-achieve with those different types of goals of counseling. Karun na po, we are going to talk about the different aims of counseling. Unse gina-target, gina-aim when we conduct counseling sessions. First, insight. Insight is understanding origins and development of emotional difficulties. There are times where we feel so sad and so happy, so gloomy and so excited Now we do not know why. We do not know the reason why we are feeling that particular emotion at that given time. Now we need to remember that we need to also determine where these emotions or feelings start, originate. And we need to make sure that if these are emotional difficulties that are playing, lurking in our mind, we have the right insight, right? For us to be able to not only understand and identify, but develop the habit of controlling these uh, emotions that we feel inside us. So that is insight. Relating with others. This is an aim of counseling that would help us develop behavior or habits that can create and maintain meaningful and satisfying relationships with others. It is a cliche nowadays class that when a person is toxic or when a person is violating your, your uh, peace zone, personal peace zone, you cut them off. But if we are going to Talk about the aim of counseling, which is to relate better with others. This does not only mean that we directly cut them off, but we also need to understand how to relate to people and how to be have, how to be able to establish meaningful and satisfying relationships with others, even acknowledging and accepting the toxic traits that they may possess or the unhealthy traits that they may have. Not really making sure that they change it over time, but for you to influence them because you are able to relate with them better. Self-awareness. This is a very important skill or a very important aim that we should manifest. Self-awareness is gaining awareness and recognizing thoughts or feelings. This is avoiding denial of these thoughts and feelings. Remember that when you are self-aware, 
nobody can question your identity and nobody can question the different principles that you have because you are the one recognizing these thoughts in your mind and the feelings that you feel. More so, it is important, class, that you avoid denying these thoughts and feelings. So if you feel that you are, then make sure that you are that that you are manifesting what is what it is. Dili kay imuha siyang i-deny because that is something that will not help you that will really stagnate you. Maglisod jud ka og um express, maglisod ka og um communicate and interact with others. Next, self-acceptance. Accepting and acknowledging the whole self. And when we talk about the whole self class, we talk about your strengths, your weaknesses. To put it into a more cliche term, your perfections and your imperfections. You need to accept what you have identified and acknowledged as the whole self in order for you to start improving and working on the things that you want to happen in your life. Another Self-actualization or individuation. This is achieving one's full potential and overcoming conflicts within oneself. This is an interesting aim of counseling because we do not need to reach a certain age or a certain quote-unquote right time to have self-actualization and individuation. We just need to understand, right? our full potential, how we can achieve it, and how we can overcome the different conflicts, the doubts in ourselves, the so many what-ifs, questioning our capabilities, kung kaya ba nato ni or dili, then we need to understand na mabuhat na nato siya. Because if we can manifest this through our actions, then that will become very, very important, right, to the different undertakings that you find or take interest in. Another enlightenment. This is achieving spiritual awakening or having a clearer perspective in life. I have always been fascinated with the book, The Purpose Driven Life, where the enlightenment of Rick Warren is being channeled through that book that you are also able to achieve no? spiritual awakening and make sure that the perspective that you have in life is not really kanabitang nasapawan with earthly things, but you know the greater purpose Nga nung nabuhi ka. The purpose, nga nung imuning ginabuhat. The purpose, nga nung nag-teacher ka. Nga nung estudyante ka. Nga nung mag-doctor ka. Or nga nung mag, you know, psychologist student ka or what not. That is enlightenment. Problem solving. Of course, one of the many aims of counseling is to be able to find solutions to a certain dilemma, issue, or problem that one cannot handle alone. Remember class, Pwede mong hindi sarilihin ang problema or iniisip mong mabigat. You always have people to talk to, whether it's your parents, your siblings, your cousins, your relatives, or your friends. Trusted individuals that you can be comfortable in sharing these difficult situations, difficult thoughts, and difficult experiences. Or you can always have um, guidance personnel or those who are experts, trained experts that are educated in the process of helping you rather than just simply listening to you and then turning the tables and then eventually bashing or criticizing you or judging you, right? That's one of the aims of counseling for you to be able to find solutions, find people that will help you become more comfortable in identifying the possible solutions of your dilemmas or issues, Next, psychological education. This is acquiring ideas and strategies that can help him or her understand his or her own behavior. When we talk about psychological goals earlier, this was controlling your behaviors. But if you are aiming, right, in the context of the aims of counseling, according to MacLeod, psychological education is the more detailed and the more structured concept where we need to acquire ideas and strategies that helps us understand our own behavior, that helps us to develop right positive and healthy ways to somehow cater to these behaviors that we have and control them. If they are desired behaviors, improve on it, enhance them. If they are undesirable behaviors, then we now have the education right on how we can lessen 
or completely eradicate and change these undesirable behaviors. So that's what we say or when we talk about psychological education. Another, acquisition of social skills. This is acquiring, learning, and mastering certain skills that are necessary for social and interpersonal interactions. Example of this is maintaining eye contact. Remember, class, that even though we are social butterflies nowadays because of the advent of technology that brings forth social media platforms for us to communicate, it is still very different when you are face-to-face, -face, when you are standing across the person that you are actually going to socialize with. That is why if you ask me, one of the things that I do, now this is something that I have learned out of uh, the many experiences of counseling, what I do is, just like in the example given, I maintain eye-to-eye -eye contact. But that did not come as a snap of a finger. I was so conscious about it. Instead, I keep on looking around. I keep on looking at their shoulders, at their neck, at their arms, at their pants. Maglaro-laro yung ako pananaw. And it's a difficult habit to break. That is why what I do when I am hosting, I practice eye-to-eye -eye contact with the audience even though I know that they cannot respond to me directly which makes me conscious but instead helps me to maintain eye-to-eye -eye contact that eventually helped me right, in conversations or interactions that I have with people. Now, I am now more disciplined to looking them straight in the eye and having a pleasant conversation using eye-to-eye -eye contact. Ya, just because of looking each other in the eye, listening to the person or giving the person your um, idea, then you are making it comfortable for the person to interact with you. right? So those are just some of the skills that we can acquire, learn, and master in order for us to have interactions that are healthy and productive. Now, let's talk about cognitive change. Cognitive change is another aim of counseling that is very, very interesting because the goal here is to modify or replace unnecessary thoughts and irrational beliefs. Remember, class, that there are phases of learning. Learning, un unlearning, and relearning. This is one of those phases of learning where there are cognitive changes. If you think that over the course of time, ang imuhang prinsipyo, imuhang thoughts is not really helpful or rational enough to become productive, then you need to modify or replace them in order for you to become um, equated, right? Or to become equivalent with a productive human being. We also have behavior change. Similar to cognitive change, behavior change aims to modify or replace self-destructive behavior. We have so many experiences, even us, right? I'm not saying nga wala ko or wala mo ani. All of us have self-destructive behaviors, whether it's hurting ourselves or eating too much. We are all admitted to doing those kinds of things unknowingly that are very, very self-destructive to our health. Physically, mentally, and even emotionally. That is why we need to have outlets in order for us to have a more constructive behavior. Or, yeah, to have more constructive behavior in order for us to develop what is helpful and healthy for us and what is not. Remember that Naginay Sumpay always, what is helpful and healthy and what is not. That is a given that. When you are going to identify these behaviors, you also need to identify undesirable ones for you to modify or replace them. Another aim of counseling is system, systemic change. This means it's changing patterns of behaviors within a certain system such as the family for it to become more productive and to have meaningful interactions. Remember that this does not only fall into your family. If you can change it in your family setup, well and good. But if you think that there is also a need for you to change in the system that, you're, that you behave with your friends, that you behave with your peers or colleagues later on, then you need to also um, establish and implement this one. You need to remember that it is not your responsibility solely 
to cater to people's dilemmas, to cater to people's wants and needs all the time. Therefore, if you think that a system, a certain system should be changed, then you should also initiate that change or communicate what needs to be changed in order for you to have a more productive and meaningful interactions with this group of people that you are um, fond with, fond of being with. Another is empowerment. One aim of counseling is empowerment which seeks to develop and acquire certain skills and to gain knowledge and awareness of one's capabilities. This ultimately leads to the full control of one's life. If we are empowered, then we are able to understand what is and what is not, how to correct it and how to communicate it constructively. If we are able to communicate it constructively, then progressive outputs will be attained. But if we are going to destroy something in order for us to come up with a constructive outlet, that does not help anybody at all, right? So we need to understand how to control our lives and how to make sure that we maneuver right according to our principles and values that we have understood by having self-awareness. Another is restitution. This is making up for previous destructive behaviors. After we have modified and replaced those destructive behaviors, we need to understand that there are certain ways for us to make up for previous destructive behaviors. It could be something in a form of an outlet that will ultimately help us right, regain our confidence to do these things that we are interested in that we have been previously destructive. If ganahan ka ka mag-drawing before but you used it as a destructive outlet, then there is restitution for you to change not only the destructive behavior but also to be interested in a particular outlet that will help you achieve the behavior that is very helpful and healthy for you. That is restitution. Generativity and social action. This is encouraging to do work for the collective good of society or a community. This is something that we commonly see nowadays. There is no volunteerism. There are people airing out their points of view to try to come up with a valid argument or a valid discussion that will help people be awakened, be educated, and be informed. So this is actually encouraging others to do work for the collective good, not only for ourselves, but for our community and the society in general. Now, these are the different scope of counseling. We need to remember that when we are going to conduct counseling, not everybody is going to be open to this process or not everybody is going to be willing to undertake this process. Therefore, there are some scopes that are presented or that are uh, emphasized in order for us to identify asaratataman or kinsara ato ang angay nga i-counsel. We have individual or personal counseling, family counseling, community counseling, career counseling, behavioral counseling, and health counseling. So these are the different scopes of counseling. Now, before we do, let's try to think about this question. What is the relevance of knowing the varying goals and scope of counseling? Ganong kailangan man nato ni masabtan? Ganong kailangan man nato ni mahibalan? Remember class that if we are more educated with counseling, the goals and scope of counseling, then we are more uh, patterned. We are more guided, right? There are guidelines now and there are certain disciplines that we need to incorporate de depending on the vary or the variety of the, the goal of counseling that we must achieve or the aim of counseling that we are wanting to attain, right? So in order for us to have an excellent or an effective counseling process, we need to understand the different goals and scope of counseling. Now, let's now go and wrap up our discussion. In counseling, goals are established by the counselor and the client. It takes two to create a roadmap of progress and a step-by-step -step process. Goal setting helps both the counselor and the client achieve their desired outcome. We need to understand that by establishing goals by both the counselor and the client, there is now ways for us to achieve this, whether be it a certain progress roadmap or a step-by-step -step 
process. Mitchell and Gibson identified nine goals of counseling, namely developmental, preventive, enhancement, remedial, exploratory, reinforcement, cognitive, physiological, and psychological goals. MacLeod also identified various aims of counseling, namely insight, relating with others, self-awareness, self-acceptance, self-actualization or individuation, enlightenment, problem-solving, psychological education, acquisition of social skills, cognitive change, behavior change, systemic change, empowerment, restitution, and generativity, and social action. The scope of counseling includes individual or personal counseling, family counseling, community counseling, career counseling, behavioral counseling, and even health counseling. Now, here is a challenge for all of us. How does establishing goals in counseling help the counselor and client? We have discussed this already, so the question now is for us to apply this into our day-to-day -day experiences and to even key and significant experiences that we are able to conduct the process of counseling. How does establishing goals in counseling help the counselor and the client in order to achieve these desired outputs or outcomes? Now, with this lesson, you can always go back to this lecture video in order for you to understand the lessons better. If you have questions, make sure to raise them on our face-to-face -face discussions or our online discussions rather. Thank you so much. Make sure to answer your modules. Good day. Keep safe and God bless.